I was thinking I'd make a cute little Korok, you know, like from Zelda, but it's not, it's not exactly coming together that way. Hello, my name is Brad and I only know how to sculpt horror babies. I also review tech for creative professionals and today we're taking a look at this. This is ZBrush for the iPad. It is a brand new release and this is based off the desktop version of ZBrush. We saw this earlier this year, Apple featured this with their new iPads, but now I actually have the chance to get my hands on it. Now, one thing that Maxon, the creator of this application wants you to know is that this is full ZBrush. At least they're trying to make it full ZBrush. This isn't like a small version of the app that lets you port the models over to ZBrush. No, they're trying to make this feature for feature a parody with the desktop version. But with that in mind, this is version 1.0. So not everything is in here yet, but boy, there's an awful lot. Now, I personally have only been using ZBrush for about a week now. I'm familiar with Blender, but I'm coming in as a noob. Now, one thing that has jumped out to me about this app is how when you just open it up and you start playing around with the Apple Pencil and sculpting is anybody can make something from this. It might not look good. like my sculpts here. I mean, my sculpts don't look good, but you could jump in and create something. Whereas other art programs, you have to have some kind of skill to make something look good. And the good news here is there is a free version and a paid version of this app. I'm using the free version here, but from what I can see, there's there's a lot, but if you do go with the paid version, you are gonna get more features. For example, right now, you're limited in how many brushes you can use. I mean, there's a fair number here, but there's about 200 more in the paid version. Clay brushes, clay buildups, smoothing brushes, cloth brushes. Plus, in that version of the app, you can create your own brushes or you can import brushes that exist on the desktop that you've been using already. The pro version also has additional features like depth and gravity controls, as well as auto masking, and some topographical features as well. But there's a lot to see in the free versions, so let's jump in and take a look. Like a lot of art and design programs, you're gonna start with your gallery. I'm gonna to go to my sculpts and you can see everything that I've created in here already. Uh, down here, I can import a sculpt or I could just create something new. So that's probably a good place to start. And from here, they're gonna give you a lot of 3D meshes. So if you wanna start with a nice demo head or a body or some of the other things in here, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna tap over here to primitives because these are also starting points. If you want a sphere, a cylinder, a plane, that sort of thing. And then of course there's Z spheres, which are like some already modeled out things where if you wanna start with a bear or a bug or something like that and build from there, it's already pre-built in here. I just want something boring. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a simple little Dynamesh sphere. Now the iPad is a touch screen, so we're gonna see a lot of the touch features that you would expect in an iPad app that maybe aren't available on the desktop app. You know, pinch to zoom, uh, let me draw something with my Apple Pencil. We're just gonna add some clay here, just willy nilly and start drawing some stuff on. Then I can use one finger to rotate so you can see this from some different angles. If you don't like the things that you've added, no problem, two fingers. Tap to undo, tap to undo, tap to undo. Let me do that again. And if you do want that to come back, you could take three fingers and just tap on the canvas to redo. I don't want those gloves. I'm just gonna start back with my sphere again. The other thing that they've added in here is keyboard shortcuts are really important on the desktop. So some of the most common keyboard shortcuts in uh, ZBrush have been added here in this little circle menu. So for example, I can press this one and this is going to remove clay instead of adding clay. And there I didn't really like what was going on because my brush was too big. Well, I also have a shortcut for that. Three fingers, scroll down, and you can see my brush changing up there to a different size. Three fingers, you push up and your brush can get even bigger. So if you really want to add uh, some stuff to it, you can make this brush huge and go from there. I'm going to undo everything and I'm going to shrink my brush down to kind of a normal size. Now, so far I'm showing like a lot of the hand controls, but your brush controls are over here on the left hand side. So you can choose what you wanna do. I'm just gonna say, hey, let's let's add some clay. There's some special effects that I'm gonna show you in a minute that are kinda of cool. And then you have all of your settings on this left hand side for that brush as well. Like if you want to increase the size of the amount of clay that's coming out of it. So I'm gonna start here and I've been trying to make cute things and I've been failing, but let's try this again. I'm gonna just kinda of hollow out my eye sockets and I'm gonna try to not get them too far apart from each other. And then maybe I come in here and I give my character a little nose. Let me use a different brush to do that. Yeah, there we go. That brush actually works better. And you can see I'm, I'm starting to get some there, but every time I try to make something cute, it starts looking a little spooky. Down here along the bottom are shortcuts to some of the most common tools. And all of this is customizable. I'll show that in a minute too. So if I wanna go from that basic brush to kind of my add clay brush, maybe I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna add some clay 
I'm gonna shrink this brush down a little bit. Or if I wanna come to the nose and I wanna add a little bit more clay there, I can do that. I could even build up along the side of his head if I wanted to do some ears or something like that. Or increase it. Maybe I wanna add a lot to his chin. Now, this looks kind of horrible, but that's all right because they've included ways to, to kind of clean this up. One of the other shortcuts on this little radial menu is this one. This is our smoothing brush. And this I find to be my lifesaver. Like I can make anything I want look so much better just by going in and using the smoothing brush to kind of take out all the gunky stuff that I make. When I started taking online art courses, I quickly found myself way in over my head. It was like jumping from elementary school straight into college. I needed something that was in between that. My Learn to Draw in 60 Days course is that middle step that goes over the basics of drawing so you can jump into more advanced tutorials and courses with confidence. To learn more about that course and my other ones, go to bradsartschool.com. Now, another thing you've probably noticed as I've been drawing is it's kind of symmetrical. So so if I draw on one side of the head, uh, clay appears on the other side of the head. And a lot of that stuff is going on over here on the right hand panel. Uh, I can turn off symmetry if I want and, and just draw some extra things. And there's some other settings you're going to see over here that do similar things, but kind of change up your brushes a little bit. Our other button over here lets me jump over to some other tools. For example, right now I'm using this painting tool. I could shade my, my model a little bit there. And then this other one is just by quick menu. I can just tap, hold on that, bring that up, which is gonna allow me to change my draw size and my Z intensity and all those sorts of things. Let's go over here to the upper left and let's jump back to our brushes because there's some really neat stuff in here. Uh, some of it, I'm sure someone more experienced would know what to do with it. And I've been playing with uh, the snake hooks, for example. It's called the Pros Active, let's do that. And then I could just come in here where I put these little divots and I could just give this guy horns. Let's give him some more horns right over here. There we go, not cute at all, but I'm making things, this is fun. Maybe another brush I want over here are just my shapes. I'm gonna tap on that and let's close that sidebar. And along the top you've seen, we've added a bunch of things. We have some cylinders, we have some cubes. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and insert a sphere and I'm gonna go into his eyes and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make those kind of appear there. He's now looking really creepy. I'm gonna grab my little gizmo, which if you're used to Blender, you're probably used to seeing this sort of thing. This is going to allow me to kind of change the position of the eyes because those are sticking out a bit much. So let's just pull those into the skull. There we go. By holding this button, I can come in here and I can change my focal object so I can then go back to editing my main head. And they've given you different ways to kind of do the same thing. So say I'm zoomed in, I'm working on some detail here and I, I need to rotate, but I can't because there's no room on the canvas for me to like actually get my finger on and, and rotate it. Actually, there was a little in the corner, but let's say there's not. We could use this head over here in the corner and quickly get around to the position we wanna be in. Like that snapped into the front, that snaps into like 45 degrees, looking at the forehead, top of the head. It's just a quick way to kind of get around 3D. But another thing we could do is I can pinch with two fingers and if I lift the finger, now I can rotate anywhere I want without adding paint, which is kind of neat. So you kind of get into this flow, whoops, where you're pinching and zooming and rotating and then zooming again and rotating and getting things where you want them. It's, it's a nice flow. Up along the top, we have all of our menu things. We could go home. I'm gonna go ahead and tap save and I'm gonna say, hello, that's the name of this save here. And then we also have the import button. Uh, this is the export button. Over on this side, we have our history of, of things that we've done. So if I wanna go back to the beginning, I can scrub to do that. And below that, we have this little silhouette thing over here. And that tells you how many active polygons you have. I have 46,000 here or active points. But there is a ton of customization here because there are so many tools. A lot of them are kind of hidden away until you start diving into these things. Over here on the right hand side, there's this little gear. These are all my U UI settings. So we're gonna go down here to UI and we could do all sorts of stuff. For example, if you use this wheel a lot and you just want it extra large, you could move it up in size. If you want it small to kind of get it out of the way, you could totally do that too. If you don't like the thumbnail up here, you could just toggle that on and off. And we could go in through here and you could manage your memory, you could manage your pressure curves, you could do all sorts of things in the settings. There's also layers. So if you like working on layers, you could open up your subtool palette and play with those here. You have things like split, Bunch of options for that, merging things, all, all sorts of stuff, some alignment stuff. Let's open up our palettes and take a look at that. So we have our tool palette, subtool, geometry, deformation, masking, visibility, polygroups, 
all that stuff. If you're looking for some of those features that exist on the desktop here, this is the area where we want to look to start to find. In fact, this was the part of the app where I started to dive in where I thought this is really where you could get deep into ZBrush and where I could actually see myself using this in my workflow where I'm doing a lot of backgrounds for comics and stuff like that in Blender. You know, we have lighting, we have all sorts of shapes and things like that that we could use to pull into here. Even though it is more of a sculpting app, I probably could do a lot of the stuff that I do in there. I had a quick demo of this and there was so much information packed into that one hour where I saw people using this that I'm just going to go through a list of some of the things that I just haven't covered here yet that might be important to you if you are a desktop ZBrush user. First up, the polygon count. This is something ZBrush is known for on the desktop is just how many polygons it can render. And the iPad is doing surprisingly well. For example, there's 92 million polygons that are possible here, but you're going to need an iPad with enough RAM. One of the things that Apple does is they include more RAM when they include more storage on the iPad. It's not something they necessarily advertise, but if you have an M2 or an M4 uh, iPad, if you get the higher storage options like over one terabyte, you're going to get 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of eight gigabytes of RAM. I'm gonna to have to double check my math there, but I think that's right. If you have an iPad with less RAM, like only eight gigabytes, you're only gonna get like 45 million polygons per sculpt. So if you are working with more RAM, you can go up to 92 million polygons per mesh. If you're working in the free version, I think that is a little bit more limited, but I forget the exact number. It's still a lot. Another thing they talked about that they're really excited about are realistic clay sets. Like for example, they've added monster clay uh, to the latest build. That's in the paid version, not the free version. They're also in the process of taking like another 200 or so odd brushes that are available on desktop and porting those over. So eventually there will be 400 brushes here in the paid version of the app. And there's so much more in here and I'm just like scratching the surface on this because I'm, I'm a noob. I'm just learning this as I go. But if you are interested, there is the free version out there. It's kind of fun to just play around with and see what I can do. Are you a ZBrush user? Are you excited about this? Let me know down below in the comments what kind of features you think are worth talking about in videos like this or what I should check out next. Thank you all for watching. And I'll talk to you in a couple of days.